Hello, my name is Greg Schneider with Autobach Healthcare. This short video will discuss the features and adjustments of the 3R80 knee. The 3R80 is a stance and swing phase hydraulic knee that utilizes a unique rotary design. As the knee flexes and extends, the rotor moves back and forth within the chamber that is filled with hydraulic fluids. The fluids are pushed through either the flexion or extension channel, and the valves within the channels regulate the resistance. With this unique design, the knee is able to offer both swing and stance flexion resistance using the same hydraulic volume. The stance flexion resistance is activated during loading response when the bumper compresses the stance activation button. The height of the bumper is adjustable to fine tune the activation and deactivation of the stance for the patient's weight. The 3R80 has recently been redesigned to offer a more efficient swing phase hydraulic, an increased weight limit to 275 pounds, and many more additions to optimize the knee for your active patients. The 3R80 is well designed for active K3 and K4 patients who show good voluntary control of the prosthesis. Besides providing a reliable stumble recovery, the stance and swing phase hydraulic also allows the user to descend stairs and declines in a step over step fashion. Bench alignment is the first step in the fitting process. When the parts are assembled, the alignment reference line should fall directly through the center of the knee axis. Please see the instructions for use for complete details on bench assembly. The next step is to statically align the prosthesis with the patient. Static alignment can best be optimized using the laser posture. On laser posture, the load line should fall 40 millimeters anterior to the center of knee rotation. Height and standing balance should also be optimized at this time. After static alignment is completed, dynamic alignment and adjustment can proceed. The first adjustment is to fine tune the transition from stance phase to swing phase. The adjustment cap should be removed from the back of the knee with a small screwdriver to expose the stance adjustments. The upper ring adjusts the weight bearing load level required to engage the stance flexion damping. In other words, the sensitivity. The lower ring adjusts the amount of stance flexion damping. The weight bearing load level is set to a very low level at the factory so that it is very easy for the patient to engage the stance. Have the patient walk and observe the disengagement of stance. This should happen at terminal stance and if the threshold is set too low, the stance will not disengage properly at terminal stance and the knee will tend to catch. If that is the case, turn the upper ring to the right to increase the threshold. Do this in small increments to ensure that the stance flexion damping is still properly engaging during loading of the limb. Have the patient walk again and recheck until the stance consistently disengages the terminal stance. The next adjustment is a swing flexion resistance. The swing phase adjustments are found on either side of the knee under the small blue caps. When the swing flexion is properly adjusted, the patient should feel a smooth flexion movement of the knee without, without an abrupt stop at their self-selected walking speed. If they feel that they are waiting for the foot to come forward, or if you observe excessive heel rise, increase the swing flexion resistance by turning the flexion valve screw to the right this will decrease the heel rise. If the heel rise is too low, or if the patient feels an abrupt stop of the knee during flexion, turn the flexion valve screw to the left in order to increase the heel rise. Here we can observe a proper adjustment to the swing flexion resistance. After the swing flexion is well adjusted, the swing extension should be adjusted. The patient should not feel terminal impact as the knee comes into full extension. If the patient feels terminal impact, or if you can hear an audible clunk of the knee into full extension, turn the extension valve screw to the right to increase extension resistance. If the knee is not coming into full extension, or if the patient feels like they have to kick the leg into full extension, turn the extension valve screw to the left to decrease the extension resistance. Here we can observe a good adjustment of the swing extension resistance. During the process of adjusting the swing phase resistances, the alignment should also be optimized for the individual. The final step in the adjustment process is to adjust the amount of stance flexion damping. This is best done by having the patient ambulate on stairs and declines in a step-over-step -step fashion. 
On stairs, the patient should have roughly half of the foot off of the stair, and they should maintain good upright posture while letting the resistance lower them down to the next stair. If the setting is too high, the patient will feel that the knee is too stiff and not letting them down to the stair comfortably. To reduce the setting, turn the lower adjustment ring to the left. Turn in small increments till the patient feels a controlled descent. If the setting is too low, the patient will feel that they have to rush the sound side foot down to the next stair and will feel a jarring impact on the sound limb. To increase the setting, turn the lower adjustment in small increments to the right till a comfortable descent is achieved. Here we can see a good adjustment for the stance flexion damping on the stairs. Now the adjustment process is completed. Replace the adjustment cap onto the back of the knee and make sure that the caps on the swing phase adjustments have been secured. Don't forget to Loctite and torque all screws to the manufacturer's specifications listed in the instructions for use. Thanks for watching this video and we hope it was helpful for adjusting the 3R80 knee.